Hey everybody, it's You Had to Ask, the show where I answer your questions, and this week my first question comes from Cranes Not Skyhooks, who says, Steve, I don't think we've heard from Rodney, the treasurer for Hagerstonians for Tea Party Patriotism since your last riffing on mail call video. Any chance you could call that racist bastard up and see how he's doing? You know what, you're right, it has been a while since we heard from Rodney, hasn't it? Let me, uh, let me call him up and, uh, just, you know, we'll see how life's going for old Rodney here. Uh, you know, I don't know if I even have his number anymore. I'm gonna have to ask my virtual personal assistant to find him. Surly. What the fuck do you want? Call Rodney. Your fingers are broken. You can't dial a phone. Just call him, please. Thank you. Whatever. I need to get an iPhone. Um. Hello? Hey, is that Rodney? Yeah. Hey, listen, you're on speakerphone. Is that okay? I don't give a shit. Okay, great. Hey, uh, it's, uh, it's Steve Shives, Rodney. How's it going? Steve Shives, shit. Damn near forgot who you were. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh it's been a while. Listen, I'm doing a video and uh someone just was sort of curious about uh, how you were doing. So I thought I'd just give you a call. Maybe we could just talk for a minute or two. Uh you could just, you know, I mean, well, like we got an election coming up. Are you uh are you still with the Hagerstonians for Tea Party patriotism? Yeah, I'm still a Tea Party. What the fuck you think? You're still their treasurer, right? Fuck, man. I got promoted to president. Really? Well, congratulations on the promotion. So, what what sort of uh? Yeah, president, or fuck. We're gonna get this fucking thing in shape now. Okay. Well, what sort of uh? What what candidates are you uh supporting in the election coming up here next week? Uh, like, for instance, uh, for 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 our local delegate race here in Maryland in District Two. What what? Who are you supporting for our local delegate? Mark, Mr. Neil Parrot. Two of supporting. Uh huh. Really, I'm surprised to hear that. He's a fine Christian man. Well, yeah, no, I, I know, but I mean, he's uh, on record as a very staunch opponent of uh, of rights for transgender people, and I know that that's a, a a subject very close to your heart, Rodney. I thought you were a big transgender advocate. What the fuck? I ain't no tranny advocate. Really? You're not? No. Because I've been telling everybody that Rodney the from the Hagerstonians for Tea Party Patriotism is like the biggest trans rights advocate that there is. What? I've been signing you up for mailing lists and having people send info for you for for months now. You were doing that shit, man. Don't, man, don't be telling them to send no tranny shit here. Yeah, no, no. That I don't was... want no tranny shit. I thought they hacked my iCloud or some shit. No, no, that's not what happened. That was, it was me, Rodney. Look, I was... Look, did you ever, like, call and order a pizza and have it delivered to somebody else's house? Man, that's fucking small-time shit. I order pizza to eat, not to prank people. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, it's, it's like that. It was like that. It was like a prank. I was just pulling a prank yeah, on Yeah, well, I know how that goes, man. I pull pranks on people before, too, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. One time I pranked this coon and asked my sister out. I dragged that motherfucker behind my truck for about a mile okay, and a half. Okay, you know what? I'm going to let you go, Rodney. Okay, bye. What? So that's how Rodney's doing. Buddha Atheist 29, if a TV network asked you to do a Stephen Stuffy TV show and let you have total creative control, would you do it? If so, would you do anything differently? If not, why? Well, of course I would do it. <laughs> if they were willing to give me total creative control over the show and I could get that in writing, so I definitely had it, I, I, I would be foolish not to do it. Of course I would do it. I'd do it in a, in a second. And, I mean, the only difference would really be just the scale of the show. I think the show could just, instead of being almost entirely static shots of a guy and some stuffed animals in <laughs> in one room of his apartment, we could incorporate more characters. I could have a better, you know, quality. I could have someone actually shoot it for me so that I could have camera movements. You know, just little stylistic tweaks and technical tweaks like that to make it just uh, um, a better, more visually appealing show. Those are really the only differences. Being able to shoot on different locations, um, maybe have me come and drop in on Stuffy at his uh, place of business, you know, the, at the, the, uh, the Mid-Atlantic Food Bank, which I, which I can remember the name of now because I'm not in a Stuffy video. Um, 
maybe, you know, drop in on Toby Benson actually teaching a Krav Maga class or, you know, see what some of his more sordid business is outside of the house. I mean, things like that. It would just be able, being able to sort of explore the characters and, and uh, do things in a, in a different setting. Maybe see a little bit more instead of just hearing about things uh, after the fact. It's just that sort of thing. But yeah, of course I would do it. It would be insane not to do it. Joseph Fampiano. Hey, Steve. I also ally myself with the feminist movement, so I'm hoping you can answer this question. I agree that we as a society should teach men not to rape. I also think that victim blaming is hideous and destructive, and I think that women should be able to dress however they want without fearing for their safety. That being said, I don't see why many feminists take umbrage to the suggestion of safety measures, i.e. watching your drink or staying in a group for when they go out at night. There are some people in this world who just can't be taught not to rape. And with the recent discovery of Hannah Graham's remains in mind, I don't think there's anything wrong with advising women, or men for that matter, to be cautious and observant when they go out at night. I'm not a woman, so maybe I'll never fully understand. However, I know that I would never let a drunk friend, male or female, go home alone. Your thoughts? It's not that it's bad advice, and it's not that it's not well-intentioned, because I think clearly in your case, and in the case of many people, it is very well-intentioned. You just want people to look out for themselves, to be cautious, to keep themselves safe if they go out, uh, you know, and they find themselves in a situation where they could be taken advantage of and, and some harm could come to them. It's, it's not that. It's that for so, so many years, the issue of women preventing crimes against them, preventing them from becoming victims of sex crimes or, or assaults or being taken advantage of after having a few too many drinks, that that was, for years, the focus of that was, well, you women, you just, got, you just have to watch yourselves. It's all on you. It's your responsibility because men are going to be men and they're just going to do what they do. And so you have to watch your drink. You have to make sure that you have a friend with you. You have to make sure that uh, if you dress a certain way, you're prepared for the consequences. And I think after just so many years of hearing that and hearing it over and over again and having people say it as though no one's ever said it before, as though they're presuming that, that a woman is hearing this for the first time, uh, or that a woman needs a man to explain these things to her, it just starts to, it, it starts to sound patronizing. Uh, so it's not the advice itself, and I, li I like the way you incorporate men and women, because it's good advice for anybody. If you're going out to a public place, if you're going out to a bar, and you're going to be drunk, and you might be compromised at some point in terms of your mental faculties, it's always a good idea, whether you're a man or a woman, to have a, a designated driver, to keep an eye on your drink, to not go places alone, or not go places with people you don't know. Like That's good advice for anybody, so I like the way you phrase it in sort of a gender-inclusive way. But that's the reason I think a lot of feminists have a problem with hearing that advice. That's why they take umbrage, because after so many years of hearing nothing but that, it, uh, it sounds patronizing. And I can understand why they feel that way. Yo Mama's Side Chef, Dear Mr. Shives, My name is Jason, and I am 21 years old, and I live in New York. Both my parents and my brother died in a car accident when I was 13, and I've been living with my grandparents since. About eight months ago, I was diagnosed with inoperable cancer. I probably won't live beyond two years. Lately, I've been depressed due to loss of my parents and brother, knowing I won't live long enough to get married, have kids of my own, have a career, and all the other things I always wanted. I've always been atheist, but lately I've been afraid of death so much. Sometimes I find myself wondering what if God is real, whether it's the Christian, Catholic, Islamic, Hindu gods, or Zeus, or Thor, etc. Sometimes I find myself praying to something, to anything, there just in case hell or heaven is real. And to be honest, I kind of wish it's real so I can see my family again. But I also feel disappointed because I feel I'm lying to myself and letting my atheist community down and giving Christians a bad representation of atheists. Can you give me some thoughts or advice on how to handle death, fear of hell, and wanting heaven to be real for my family? Thank you for fulfilling my final years with knowledge and laughter. 
I know that I can't do much to change the world, but at least when I'm gone, you can keep fighting for the little guys like me, and my dreams will live on through you to change the world into a better place. Thanks, Mr. Shives. Well, I think after all that, you can call me Steve. Uh, thank you very much for writing that, and I, I, I can only say how sorry I am to hear about your circumstance. Uh, I hope that you have more than two years left. I hope that the prognosis can improve somehow. I don't know exactly what your situation is, and I'm not going to sit here and, you know, blow sunshine up your ass and say, oh, you know, there, there's going to be, there's new breakthroughs all the time, and who knows, you might outlive us all. I, that's, that, that, that's a little patronizing when people say that sort of thing to someone in your situation, and I don't want to say that. But I just, I would say that I very much hope that something like that would be the case. I would not worry if I were you about letting down the atheist community or not putting the the best face on the atheist community for religious folks. I mean, that's a nice thought, but you have enough on your plate already. You have enough to be worried about and upset about and depressed about and scared of as it is. You don't need to burden yourself with, oh, and I'm letting my fellow atheists down. Don't worry about that. Nobody else... It's nobody else's business. Nobody else has anything to say to you about it. It's your life. It's your belief. It's your situation that you can deal with however you find is the best way to deal with it. If you ever find yourself in a particular moment of depression or fear or sadness, I found that the, the really the best thing for me is to reach out to someone else either verbally like reach out to someone else, try to communicate with someone through the internet or, or call somebody or if there's someone there with you. Uh, and if someone's there with you, you know, reach out and just give somebody a hug. Talk to somebody. Tell somebody what you're feeling. Work through it. Talk through it. Uh, and hopefully it will, it will pass, the fear and the anxiety and the depression. Because there's really, there's really nothing for it other than standing it and, and working your way through it. I don't know. I wish things were better for you. And I'm, I'm, I'm flattered and, and glad at least that you found some use in my work that you have no idea how flattering that is to me to hear you say that uh, but yeah I wish things I, I'm glad that you commented I'm glad that you watch I hope I can continue to be of positive use for you and uh, I hope things are not I, I hope things are not as as dire as as uh, as it sounds like they are, but I, I, I don't want to presume that they're not. And uh, I don't know. Thank you, I guess. <laughs> Thank you for, for being there. Here's one from AP Danielski. Yo, Steve, what's your favorite curse word? Personally, mine is cunt. I know many U.S. women are infuriated by this word, so I try to exclusively use it when describing men to reduce its misogynistic stench. There just aren't enough words that end in unt. Sure, there is bunt and punt, but if one is not talking about sports, it is unlikely you would hear unt. Plus, the hard K is also a delight to enunciate. Why can't Americans be more like the Brits, Irish, and Aussies when it comes to the popular usage of cunt? It is truly an exquisite monosyllabic treat for any tongue to say. Thanks for sharing your opinions. P.S. If you don't answer my question, then you're a cunt. I think cunt is a great swear word. I think it's an awesome word, and um, I, 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 like you, am aware of its sexist, misogynistic uh, difficulties, and I try to be aware of that when I use it. But it's a great word. I love you, you. You describe it in terms of of its of its sound and the feeling of pronouncing it just perfectly. I completely agree with you. The hard K and the monosyllabic. Uh, construction. It's it's a very direct word. You can ejaculate it. You can just spit it out. Uh, you can bite on it. It's a great word. And you can invest it with such emotion, you know. Uh, and I think a good swear word has to have those things. A good cuss word. Has, you have to be able to I infuse it with a lot of very direct, uh, instantly readable emotion for it to be useful in that way. That's why I, my favorite is fuck. It's not. It's 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 a very popular choice. It's not a terribly creative choice for favorite swear word, but that's my. I, I, it's my favorite. It's an incredibly versatile word. Um, you can use it for any part of speech. And, and and I mean nowadays, the English language has become so open and flexible 
that you can use pretty much anything for anything. I mean, the, the internet has opened us up to the possibility of, of any noun being used as a verb, <laughs> you know, so fuck is not unique in that, in terms of technical, uh, potential, but just the way it's commonly used. We are, we commonly use fuck as a noun, as a verb, as an adjective, as an adverb. We use it for everything. Uh, and it's, it's beautiful for that. And like cunt, it is a very short, very direct, uh, word. You can just spit it out. You can bite it. You can fuck. You can get your lip underneath your teeth and just fuck. It's a great word. It's my favorite word. It's my favorite word, period. Not just my favorite swear word. It's my favorite word of anything. And, you know, there's motherfucker. Uh, there are all kinds of great variations and, and combinations you can do with it. It's just a great word. So, yeah, I, I share your appreciation of cunt, but my favorite, my, my heart belongs to fuck. Mr. Croup, dear Steve, am I mistaken in my perception that a common clay of low-budget horror films is an apparent violent anger at women, often linked to their sexuality? That's not to say that media of all stripes aren't festooned in general with misogynistic undertones, but romantic comedies don't equate lost virginity to grisly death impending. As a participant in the low-budget movie-making experience, have you noticed any such trends in associated horror makers or purveyors of modest means cinema? Yes, and I would say you're accurate. I would say my perception agrees with your perception. There is a strain of uh, anger and violence against women in uh, horror film, and low-budget horror especially. I think you're completely on the money with that. Actually, I remember... There's a production company from our local area. I think they're based up in Pennsylvania. Uh, I, and I can't remember the name. I won't mention the name anyway. But they made a, uh, a low-budget horror film a couple years ago that they actually got some, some decent distribution for. They got it released on Amazon Instant Video, for instance. That's where I saw it. And they made a film uh, that I, it made me angry. And it takes a lot for a movie to do that. Because I'm pretty much, I'm, I've grown out of the phase where, like, movies make me, like, really angry. I mean, I know I bitch a lot about, like, Man of Steel and things like that. But it doesn't really make me, like, emotionally angry. It, it stirs, like, some nerd rage in me. But it doesn't make me super angry. Like, like, I would be angry at a person. Or, like, I would be angry at some social injustice. It just doesn't do that. But this was a movie that kind of did that. And it was a movie that I'm sure very few people saw. Just a shitty little low-budget horror film. Production value below even what we at Neon Real Entertainment typically do. Just a, a little shitty fart of a movie. There was a gratuitous nudity of women, of course. There was a lot of violence and murder of women. Uh, a lot of exploitation of women. And that wasn't the only thing. The whole thing was just an ugly little movie. It wasn't just the, the women's issues that troubled me about it. It was the whole thing. But they were definitely a very undeniable, obvious part of it. Uh, and that movie is not an isolated example. It's a very, very common thing, and it's very troubling. And it's something that I, when I, when I write things for our, for our production company, uh, it's something that I try very hard to avoid. I make a conscious effort to, to make sure that if, if any of that somehow makes it in, that I cut it out. Because I don't want us to be one of those, uh, to be reflective of, of, those, of those trends in horror and in low-budget filmmaking. Because you're right, they're definitely there. And uh, they're definitely a problem. Sam Clemens, R-I-G-L. Hey, Steve. By now, I'm sure everyone heard about Marvel's new slate of films for Phase 3 and onward depending on what rock they've been living under. Not that I have a problem with that. Mole men are decent people. Including Black Panther, female, presumably Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, Civil War, and The Inhumans. Which upcoming film excites you the most? Thanks. Well, I'll give Marvel this. Uh, <laughs> when it comes crashing down, inevitably as it must, uh, it will not be because they thought too small. <laughs> they're saying, you know what, we're going to, their, their whole attitude, really ever since the first Iron Man movie, their whole attitude with this Marvel Cinematic Universe has been, fuck it, we're just going to go for it. And they're continuing to just say that and to go for it. And I admire them for that, if nothing else. Uh, and I mean, I, the movies have been good as well. I admire them because the movies have, have been good. I don't know. See, a lot of them are based on Marvel Comics properties that I am not super familiar with because I was always a DC guy when I was heavy into comics. So, I mean, I never read 
any of the Marvel version of Captain Marvel, so I, I can't really say, I'll go, I'm super excited that they're finally doing a Captain Marvel movie. Like, I've, I've never read any of it, so I don't really know. If Avengers 2 is really good, if Avengers 2 turns out to be as good as the trailer makes it look, then I'll be excited for, like, all of them. Then I'll be excited for the two-part Avengers Infinity War thing. I'll be excited for, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I'll be, if they, if they pull off Avengers 2, uh, then... I will be on board for the whole fucking slate. I'll be like, yes, let's do it. You know, if they can pull that off. That's a lot hinges on that for me. Um, I mean, after that, I'll, I'll leave. If Avengers 2 turns out to be as awesome as it looks, I'll even line up to see fucking Thor 3. I'll see the fucking God of Thunder movie. It's not that I have anything against Thor. I just wouldn't pick him as my favorite Avenger. Although his gimmick as being the god of thunder and the guy who lifts up the hammer and calls down lightning bolts and all that shit. I mean, it is useful to me in this instance because I can use it as a, a sort of maybe kind of halfway decent segue to the lightning round. Rapid fire questions, glib and adequate answers. I'm not saying it was a great segue, but I've certainly done worse. Would you not agree? Bush Basher 85. You're on an apocalyptic barren street standing in front of your army ready to lead William Wallace style to do battle with the opposing army. On your side, you have you, Ashley, Stuffy, the whole WWF gang, all the Marvel and DC heroes, Liam Neeson, Bruce Willis, Arnold, Marr from Sin City, and the Walking Dead army. The other side has William Lane Craig, Josh McDowell, Ray Comfort, all the Marvel villains and DC villains, Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, David Goyer, Akiva Goldsman, Pat Robertson, and a large number of walkers, demons, dragons, and velociraptors. You've just given an epic speech to fire up your army to fight to the bloody end. You scream something epic and you run sword unsheathed and you get closer and closer to your enemies. You then raise your sword high above you and your lungs on fire from screaming. Knowing at that moment you're about to have an epic death during which you will take out several enemies with you, I simply must know, what does Steve Shives put on a really good burger? My burger tastes are relatively traditional and conservative. I like a nice slice of cheese, maybe Swiss cheese, uh, provolone if I'm feeling super creative. Uh, pickles, dill pickles, a couple of pickle chips on there, uh, lettuce, mayonnaise, and preferably a, a lightly toasted bun. That's my perfect burger. Uh, oh, and, and if, if possible, the toppings can be cold while the burger is hot. I like nice cold toppings and hot burger. Uh, anyway, Seth Topper, why do people ask you relationship questions? Yes, you're married and you appear to have a working relationship with an other individual, but you are by far not Steve the Relationship Guru. Do you have a hidden psychology degree I am not aware of? Oh no, I don't. I have no idea why people ask me relationship advice. And, I, and the, the better question is, why do I so irresponsibly agree to answer it? Do I want to ruin people's lives? I don't know. Patrick Dodds, lightning round question for Halloween. Steve, have you seen John Carpenter's 1978 film, Halloween? If so, what's your brief take on the film? Do you agree with the consensus of it being a classic, or do you have an understandable aversion to these types of films? Come on, man, it's Halloween, the holiday. I think the original Halloween is one of the best horror films of the last 40, 50 years. I think it's of the modern sort of slasher era forward films i think it's awesome i love the original halloween i think it's a great movie um i even you know what and this this is puts me in a slightly smaller minority i think that rob zombies remake was pretty good too it's a totally different movie i don't think it's as good as the original uh and it definitely goes off in its own direction but i, I think that was good too but yes carpenter's original is one of my favorites a great movie and obviously a great movie to watch around halloween Creighton Reed, hey Steve, lightning round question. What do you think about Darren Aronofsky as a director? I l think he's great. I've loved everything of his I've ever seen. I thought Pi was terrific. I thought Requiem for a Dream was a masterpiece. Uh, and just this year, uh, he did uh, Noah, which I thought was great. I think Aronofsky is a terrific director. Ted Apelt, hey Steve, what do you think about getting money out of politics? Oh, uh, when can we do it? I think it's a great idea, and I think it's a necessary idea. I think that all uh, 
all elections, all political campaigns in the United States should be publicly funded. I think we should just completely take direct contributions to candidates away completely. If you want to contribute, you contribute to a common fund, and then that fund gets uh, equally divided among all the candidates that make it onto the ballot. That's how I think it should be done. I would get, I would get direct contributions, direct money, completely out of politics. Ben Hawkins, hey Steve, if you were to have dinner with any Christian apologist, which one out of the ones you've read so far would you most want to have dinner with? Also, which question would you most like to ask at such a dinner? Thanks so much. Love the channel. Oh, it's actually, it's, it's easy. I would totally want to have dinner with Ray Comfort. I mean, as, as much as I disagree with him on things and as much as he has said things that have caused me to question his honesty in some cases, he seems like a really nice, really affable guy, and I think I would have a great time hanging out with Ray Comfort. Um... And I don't know, I, I guess the question I would ask him, I would, I would want to settle once and for all if I'm right or if Aaron Ra is right and Ray is sincere or a phony. Although, uh, I guess if he's a phony, he probably would tell me that he was sincere. So I guess I probably wouldn't get it. If he turns out to really be a phony, I wouldn't get an answer to that question. But... but uh, but that's the question I would ask. Rob Santana, hey Steve, I got a hard one for you and also a difficult question to ask. Oh, Rob. I just watched your Five Stupid Things About Transphobia video, which I totally agree, and I got a somewhat related question. There's a condition called alien hand syndrome, where someone is under the delusion that their limbs don't belong to them, so much so that they get surgeries to have them removed. Would you say that these people are expressing their true self they felt they are inside? What's the difference between cutting off your legs and cutting off your dick? I would say the difference is that alien hand syndrome is a neurological disorder, and being transgender is not a neurological disorder. It's just another position on the spectrum of human gender and human sexuality, unlike alien hand syndrome, where there is something busted up there. Astro God 7 Hey, Steve, this is Warren from the Google Hangout this weekend. Hi, Warren. Thanks for uh, stopping by this weekend. I am considering getting into making YouTube videos, hence the mention of new equipment, and was wondering if you had any advice for someone who is just starting out and has never been on camera before. Thanks, AG07. Well, as far as being on camera, the best advice is don't be too hard on yourself at first. Like, try to do as best as you can, but if you watch a video that you make early on and you, you look, you're, you're not completely happy with how you look or how you come across. Don't be too hard on yourself. It comes with practice. It comes with experience. The more you do it, the better you'll be. Uh, have good lighting. Have a good... You looked fine during the Hangout this weekend. So, I mean, have good lighting. Have good cameras. Have good microphones so that you look and you sound as good as you can. Uh, and just be confident. Be yourself. And, and have something to say. Uh, that's the most important thing. Have something to say that, that you are saying in a way that only you can say it. And I know that's very general advice, but that's, that's I mean, you, you have to figure it out for your own, for yourself. Uh, but I would go for that. Don't do things that other people are already doing. Do things your way and in a way that only you could do them. Atheist Bob. Hi, Steve. Let's say you die and go to your personal heaven. What is there? Uh, my wife, my cat, um, my friends, a baseball park, and a movie theater. That wasn't very funny, was it? <laughs> hey, that's it for the questions. Before I get out of here, I'm going to do a shout-out, as always, and the shout-out this week, long overdue. Love this channel. Love this YouTuber. The shout-out this week goes to Atheist Minority. Her name has been mentioned on this channel before, I know, in this series, and many of you have, have mentioned her uh, in the comments of these You Had to Ask videos. I think I've probably mentioned her once or twice as well, uh, but she's never gotten an official sort of, like, shout-out for me, but she gets one now. Uh, very fast-growing channel. She really, if you look at her channel, she only has a, a handful of videos, but she has just blown past 5,000 subscribers recently. Actually, about a little over a month ago, she did a video about uh, where she mentioned that she was creeping up on 5,000 subscribers. Now, uh, just a little over a month later, she's creeping up on 6,000 subscribers. She's growing very fast. It's wonderful to see. Uh, uh, she is a former Christian 
who now is an atheist and brings a lot of personal experience and a lot of personal insight into discussions of faith and uh, theology and Christian culture. Her most popular video in terms of views right now is a video called How to Stay a Christian, uh, where she goes through all the things you have to do or uh, things maybe that you should avoid doing if you want to remain a Christian and not be disillusioned and not have uh, reasons to turn away from your faith and become an atheist and embrace a more scientifically based, reason based outlook. Uh, great video. She talks a lot about the Bible. She's, she uh, is just an awesome, awesome voice uh in the youtube atheist community and i know a lot of you watch her stuff already but if you're watching my videos i have like 10 times as many subscribers as she has if you're watching my stuff you should be watching her stuff as well you should at least give it a chance and see if it's your cup of tea because she is excellent and it's a fast growing channel i hope it continues to grow i hope she gets a much larger audience which she and her work richly richly deserve the shout out this week atheist minority check out her channel it is great now, uh, I'm done for this week, but uh, I'm going to do this again next week, I think. Do you think I should do this again next week? Yeah, I'll do it again next week. So, uh, in order for me to do it next week, you have to ask me some more questions that I can then answer. So, leave a comment on this video and ask me some questions for next time. Ask me anything about anything. No subject is too serious. No subject is too silly. I will answer as many of them as I possibly can in the next video. So uh, I will see you guys in the next video as someone unloads a truck across the street and interrupts me and throws me off. That's why. It's not my fault. It's someone else. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video, everybody. Take care.